Welcome to Northwest Air Guns. I'm John, and today's uh, video, if you might notice, has a little bit different look to it. Um, and it's a different kind of video. It's, we haven't done anything like this in the past because, number one, it doesn't involve any air guns. Um, yeah, I suppose I could go get one out of the truck, but it really has nothing to do with air guns. It's about uh, machine reconditioning and scraping. So the way this came about is uh, we have a group of uh, hobby machinists uh, here in the Sacramento area. And a few years back, I was on the hobby machinist uh, forum and happened to read a post from a guy, and he's in West Sacramento. Well, I'm from West Sacramento. So um, I thought, well, I'll, I'll give him, uh, send him a message and see if he uh, wants to get together and, and uh, compare shops or something. And so I did, and then like virtually the same time, there was a fellow posted from Sacramento, Bob Corbs, who's uh, pretty prolific over there on the hobby machinist forum. And so we've gone from a group of about three people to uh, close to 30, and it's not a club. You know, club would imply that there's some organization involved, and there really isn't, but it's a good group of people. A couple of the members had an interest in scraping. One of them had previously taken the, uh, this class and uh, uh, attended uh, what was called Scrape Fest that was uh, sponsored by Tom Lipton over at Ox Tools in the Bay Area. And so there's been a kind of a background or, or undercurrent of scraping on the part of some of our club members. And, and I was interested in it. I've always had an interest in uh, machine reconditioning because all my machines are old. So that one thing led to another and uh, corresponded with Richard King about a class in this area uh, and it all came together here. So you won't learn to scrape in this video. It's not about that. It's more to give a flavor of what uh, attending a machine reconditioning and scraping class would be like. And so um, we're going to try and give you that flavor. Uh, that, of course there will be some scraping involved uh, and some discussion about scraping and why and, and where and some of the techniques, but uh, the gist of it is uh, kind of an overview of how you learn to scrape in one of these classes. The main thing I guess I learned was the uh, was the four things that that he really calls the key to his his, his uh, you know more, more important things about having individual scrape marks and having having individual lines of scrape marks and the uh, and the depth of your uh, scrape cuts. And um, uh oh, I forgot the fourth or third. Uh, mainly, more than anything else, I think it, for me it was just kind of getting a little muscle memory and, and or trying to develop some some muscle memory about uh, right. you know uh, I know with the very first uh, few scrapes that I did, I mean it seemed I was kind of like all over the place, right? You right. know, and uh, so uh, as the day wore. For the day worn Let's on, take a look I, at it. You don't have the blue on there now. Yeah, but so. you've got a nice pattern. Looks. Yeah, looks I've, I've been high here on the ends for quite a few. I, I guess that's one of the things that I've I learned is you know I guess when, you know I did have about a thousandth uh, uh, underneath you know the center here when I first uh, the first time I blued it. And now that I've gone through this thing about four times, I realize you've been a lot more aggressive, you know, the, on, the on, the, on the ends the first time, you know. I mean, and if you're only taking three tenths out, you know, per per pass, then uh, you know you, you you know you got to go to a thousandth. I mean, you you got to just get at it a little Keep better. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, All right. How you feeling? Uh, I'm a little bit sore, but uh, not uh, not as bad as I uh, uh, anticipated being, uh -huh. you know. But I think things in general went pretty well around here yesterday. I, I think at the beginning of the day, I was a little worried that uh, we weren't going to have enough table space for everybody and right. and all their stuff. But uh, I think uh, for the most part, it's worked out pretty well. It worked out really well, yeah. yeah. Well, it's a great shop, and we all appreciate you.
putting us up here. And yeah. Hosting so it. no, it's, I'm, I'm really, you know, it's, I'm really kind of glad to be able to share it with people, and it's fun having people here and uh, and uh, doing doing things together. So, right. okay. first of all, how you feel? Tired. <laughs> Tired. Any particular place or? Oh, my back's a little sore, and other than that, I'm just kind of fatigued. <laughs> Okay. Um, it's nice to have a bunch of people that are all motivated and uh, and working together to do the, the same sort of thing. It makes us kind of uh, fraternity. Yeah, fraternity of people doing it. Not not a competition or anything, but just a yeah. A group well, of I felt a little behind yesterday when other people. Me too. <laughs> are ready to uh, go to forty points, and I'm still trying to get it flat. So yeah. So how did your piece turn out? Are you happy with it? it? Is, well, I, I started out with a piece that, that's very uh, convex, and uh, so I still haven't got down to the base on the ends. Jeez. I'm not happy with the la last, I was doing step scraping, and I got away from the checkerboard pattern, which looks pretty ugly, so i got to fix that <laughs> early oh, on you again. You your lines are... The lines are... You started like yeah. that, and then gradually. I brought another t couple tools this morning yeah. to help me help help me with that. That's what I did this morning. I came in and I got I got this, and I just put 45s all the way across both directions. So yeah, I, I think this one might be useful. It's uh, yeah, and I'll set that to this, and maybe you're a 40 degree guy instead of 45. So, well, yeah, I mean just. Um, I got into metalworking through a friend maybe 10 years ago, and the first thing I bought was a very clapped out lathe with visions of restoring it. I, I found out it was, it was way too far gone. I completely dismantled it, reassembled it, but did not take it any further. It was still worn out. It was completely worn out. Okay. So <laughs> I got another lathe in much better shape. I did a complete restoration on that. Everything short of scraping and alignment, which I didn't know how to do. How do you feel? I feel great. I had no issue other than a little bit of not sleeping because I'm still pondering. <laughs> you you know, dreamed about scraping. Right? Yeah, I woke up at that's, about that's in the morning. I, well, I'm still, I'm not sure. You know, I regressed a little bit at the end of the day. When I started using the bluing, I stopped using the yellow. Right. And I think that was a mistake as well because I got to where I couldn't tell where I was scraping, what I'd scraped and what I had. Right, yeah. Um, a lot of that was, is lighting too, I think. Yeah, I, I had a light on it and I could generally tell. I mean, mostly I've got, I was bearing all the way through here and then all the way over here, and I was really just trying to get back to the middle, and but it was yeah. hinging hard. Now actually my hinges have moved in, <laughs> except I'm just touching in a couple of spots. <laughs> so as soon as I knock those off, I don't know what's going on. You know, by the end of the five days, this will be nice and flat, I'm sure. Yeah, it'll only be well I'm thing. hoping I can get onto my project, but you know, I. I need to get this thing much more like that one before. We're all we're all using these. So. Don't. He's our standard. <laughs> Big mistake. Are you going to be working on this? This is the goal. The project. We will see. Boy, that's that's ambitious. That's good. It was it was really ambitious on my little clousing mill that has have a, an eighty five twenty. I have an eighty five twenty. Oh, so do I. A fifteen inch. Wow. Yeah, so a 12 inch would have been a much better choice wow. than the 18 because I had to move the head every time. Oh, you didn't have 18 inches of travel? 15. Oh. It's a, got a 6 by 24 you table. You could just cut that off though. And... <laughs> the thought crossed my mind and I had an accident where it almost happened anyway. Why you took a scraping class? Yeah. Um, well, it's actually uh, an opportunity to meet somebody that's uh, a real expert in the, uh, in the field and get some proper training. You know, I've been chicken scratching for a while and very interested in the process. And um, I kind of really enjoy these uh, fundamental processes where you can create flat planes or straight surfaces with very little tools. Um, so, you know, people ask, how was the first machine tool made? Well, this is how it was done. And uh, um, it's very clever and it's, uh, um, it's at the kind of this fundamental level that's really neat, right? So it's like foundations of, uh, of the rest of our knowledge are built on some of these. So it's pretty, that's what I find interesting. And, uh, Any surprises yesterday or anything that um, stood out? 
No, I, I don't think so. I mean, a lot of these things, you know, you, you read a lot of the stuff, you watch videos, and uh, so you kind of have a sense of it, right? But, and, you know, and that's all great, right? But there's no substitute for doing the work, right? I don't know about you, but I'm, I, I'm stiff. Can you feel it? I can feel it, right? So it's kind of like exercising muscles, right? And truly, and um, so there's nothing like practice. And, and the best is practice under um, the eye of somebody that can correct you. I mean, sure, I can go crazy in my shop, right? You know, but <laughs> you could really go down the wrong road uh, right. a long ways and have to unlearn some stuff. And well, uh, It was interesting yesterday, the, you know, because he's talking about scraping forward or scraping backwards when mm -hmm. you're doing the paint spray. Yeah, it's simple stuff like that. You go, oh, yeah. right. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. You're, our, you're our returning student, the guy with all the experience. <laughs> How you feel today? Feel good. I'm actually happy to be doing this again. Get like your straight muscles working in now. <laughs> All stiff and sore, yeah. Uh -huh. And I see you got your project with me. Yeah, well, it's uh, first project anyway. The project to work on the project. <laughs> so uh, yesterday we were looking at this. You've been scraping on this. this yeah, just the dovetail side. How are we coming on it? It's getting there. It's uh, still a little low in the middle. Um, hitting on the ends. Had a pretty good ridge along this edge uh, from. I don't know if the, the machining left an edge somehow. I'm not sure what happened. Yeah. What, what do you mean by a little low? Uh, probably it's less than a thou, so it's, but several tenths, probably probably half a thou or so. Uh, it's kind of cool how you got this set up to hold it. And that's yeah. what you're scraping. I had cleverly made a little kickstand for it and sheared off the screw. <laughs> I'm a carpenter by trade, but I'm really interested in metalworking, and uh, a few years ago I got involved in it, and, and I realized that scraping was one of those things that uh, interested me a lot, and so I uh, signed up for this class and got in, and I'm having a ball. How do you feel? Physically, you're doing good? Yeah, no. No, no, not at all. No. How did your piece come out? Let's take a look at it. Uh, well, it's not blued up right now, but um, it's probably working at 5 to 12 points per inch right now mm -hmm. over the surface. It hinges well, and so I'm just working the points, trying to get them to uh, get more points per square inch. Did you make this? I did, yeah. And that's the points in... Yeah, this is a square inch hole, and you set it over. These are just the radiuses of the various... Uh, uh, diameters of that you can use for cutting the radiuses of the tool that you're scraping with. I think I'm working on a uh, 40 uh, millimeter radius right now for yeah. points, but I was scraping at 60 uh, millimeter oh, okay. <laughs> when I was uh, roughing in. No, I have a machinist background and automotive background, and I've combined the both now. Around it, yeah, all, you know, all my life. Since I've I work uh, where I'm working now, um, they've um, I'm doing more fabrication and machining for them, mm -hmm. and subsequently since then I've kind of restarted my own hobby shop okay. as a, as a result. Right, right. And um, I've been like everybody else, been buying equipment and so forth and so on, and uh, all used. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, <laughs> yeah, and. Uh, um, the big thing was, uh, for me, um, I like chasing flatness or chasing tents, so surface grinders in the future, um, and this is just one way. Yeah, I really enjoy that side of it, uh, more so than, um, than production machining. Production machining is pretty monotonous and mundane, so. Right. Do you have any good screw machine jokes? No, no screw machine jokes. All right, just wonder. <laughs> All right, how, so how did it go yesterday? Uh, it went pretty well. Um, I'm having uh, a little bit of a problem with my ends being on the high side and, and the hinging. Um, I don't have any bluing on it right now. I've wiped it off. But uh, generally in this area, the hinging is starting to come in, but my center has been low. From the and, beginning? Um, yeah, pretty much from the beginning. Yeah. I'm all the same, same thing that he's... He's been low in the middle, and he's, or maybe it was Jim, he's talking about how he's 
he's having a hard time not babying it. Yeah, yeah well, I was chasing. The one thing I was chasing was corners, so I was diagonally off for a while. And then I rotated around, and I got diagonally off the other way. <laughs> And so I finally, just before we left last night, I had it pretty well hinging, starting more in the center of it, but still not quite all the way in yet. I don't think I'm that far off now, um, but um, we'll find out this morning. I'll blue it up and, uh, and uh, reorient where my uh, hinge points are and uh, kind of continue on. Uh, I'm uh, an instructor uh, in the machine technology department at Laney College. Um, and uh, I'm also on YouTube. It's a uh, machine tech video blog. That's the channel if you want to go check it out. Oh, okay, cool. And uh, so, you know, I heard about this class through uh, Tom Lipton and uh, decided to, to come by because it's kind of a lost art, you know. And uh, one of my, one of the things that I'm really interested in doing is uh, passing on these kind of lost uh, industrial arts to you know a new generation of, of students. So I'm hoping to take this knowledge back and you know, maybe have some workshops at the college and uh, something like that. I also have a couple of lathes that I really want to rebuild, yeah. uh, a couple of 10 double E's, and um, wow. you can't really scrape the tables because they're hardened, but um, you know the saddles and the uh, compounds. And so that, that's kind of where I want to go with this. All right, we're here with Paul from Reno. Paul uh, is a member of our Sacramento Valley Hobby Machinist Group. And so, Paul, what are you doing here? Why did you take the class? Well, I took the class so I could work on my Logan lathe that's way out of alignment. Uh, it's got problems with the bed and various things. So I kind of figured I'd try to figure out how to do that. And it's a long term you're looking for a take this and go back home and scrape out the uh, I'll the scrape out the way yeah, immediately, yeah. I'm going to get right on it. Okay. Hopefully continue to do that, and once I have the Logan done, move on to the Bridgeport. Yeah, there you go. How are you feeling today? You know, first day uh, you know, my lower back's hurt just a little bit, yeah. but, I, you know, overall, I'm pretty good. Uh -huh. Yeah. How did your uh, cast iron come up? Well, it's much better than when I started. Apparently, I had some gouging problems. Yeah. Well, yeah. this end of the this end of the room had gouging problems. It's not just you. Yeah. Well, it's it's coming in real quick now. So you got blue and on it. What can you glean from the pattern here? Well, I mean, at the moment, it looks like I'm mainly high across a couple of the edges and basically up in here. So I don't think I'll touch. Most of what's down here, I'm probably not going to touch. Although it's you'll hit these two corners pretty hard then. And yeah, and the spots that are a little bit darker on the edges. You can see how it's. Oh yeah, it's almost okay. black. Bob was talking this morning about the shiny points, and I kind of spaced on those all together. But you don't look like you have. Some. Yeah, I don't have too many super high spots. No. Um, what do you think, Bob? All the places that are look like a bullseye with a lighter in the middle and darker around the edges. Mm -hmm. Those are the highest spots. Mm. But that shiny part is rubbing. Directly on the plate. It's yeah. rubbing through the ink. Yeah, I've been doing the same thing. I've been looking at the blue and and everything that wasn't blue. Well, I thought until it was you good. get really close, it's not you know that big of a deal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. What's your project going to be, Paul? Oh, I got a 36-inch Camelback. Oh, you're going to scrape it. I'm going to do that. Right, yeah, that's the plan. All right. Well, we'll be <laughs> interested to see how that goes. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. What are those rules again? There's five of them. Yeah. Well, actually, um, six, but we won't tell the six. <laughs> All right. That, that's, that stays in the class. Yeah. Right. All right. Number six stays in back of it. Um, individual. Um, Mark, scrapes, scrapes, and what does that mean, individual scrapes? Um, and this is for the roughing, right? Well, finish, individual, it's for finishing, but he, all the way through. Pretty much all the way through, but more for finishing okay. is that when, well, hell, here we go. <laughs> individual marks is when you scrape, you're scraping a, 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 a blade, and you're pushing forward. So you're going to scrape a mark, then you're going to come back, and you're going to have a gap. So then you have another scrape, come back, and you're going to have another scrape. And this is called individual scraping marks. Rule number one. Rule number one. And number two then is individual scraping lines. 
And that would be you'd come up and you'd hit this one, this one, and this one. Now, we'll kind of go down here or maybe up here. That's the good way. The bad way is you get them too close together or they overlap. And then when you go blue up later, that'll be a big hole. Right. So that's individual scraping marks, individual scraping lines, so there's separation this way. And then number three Depth is... Depth cut. Depth of cut, and what does that mean? You want them all consistent. Yeah, you want to have your rows, the depth. How deep? Um, well, a difference for everybody, but somewhere two tenths. Yeah, that's right. Minimum of two tenths, min, and max is somewhere near a thousand. Yeah, right. A thousand inches you better write that on here. And that'd be a max. When you're hand scraping or power scraping. Okay. And number four. No, I always had trouble with, is that the one with the hand wipe everything? No. That's number four. That's five. Is, Can you give me a uh, hand here with number four? It's where you hinge the part. Hinge, hinge the right, part. Yeah. And, uh, and what does that mean? When you set a part on a table, you're gonna, you'll take and you wiggle it back and forth and you want it to hinge or pivot on a point here and here, about 30% in from each side. And that's basically where you're checking the, what they call as the rotation of points or the airy points. And it's kind of like I say, it's like a, you can think about a teeter-totter. You know, if the teeter-totter is in the middle, this hangs down, and this hangs down. And if you had it sitting on horses here and here, it'll hang down here. But you kind of want a happy medium so that it, as it hangs down here, it also wants to kind of push up. It hangs down here, it wants to push up here. So you figure about 30% in and it keeps it constant. So that's number four, and then you knew five. And what, 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 why do we say, wipe it with your hand, why do we say that? You can feel the grit with your hand, maybe. Then you can with a cloth or a paper yeah. towel. And yeah, sometimes you have lint. You run a yeah, you run a dirty rag over something, and then you you go and put it on the table. You got dirt, but you the old timers, the old machinists years ago would always make us use a brush, mm -hmm. and then your hand because you can feel the crud. Yeah. So yeah. that that's the the five rules, so. and then. Then six is be nice to the teacher. <laughs> yeah, forget about six. Six. Some of us are not clear on number six.